I took my plank shield to Dave and Reach European Historical Martial Arts School, and we subjected it to a lot of beating with training weapons and with sharpened steel weapons. I'd like to thank everyone at the school, especially John Dietzel and Stephen Fick for being willing to do the live steel testing on the shield. Both of them are teachers at the school and have over 40 years collective experience with sword fighting, so you know that those hits are real hits. I think that you're going to find this is a fascinating video. You're going to see the legendary shield binds the sword move, and I can reassure you now with definite confidence that that is a thing. Uh, as you can see from this still here, we didn't do any choreographed, planning, contrived situations. This is John swinging at Stephen and Stephen defending himself with the shield. The shield came out okay and I think with a few modifications would be perfectly serviceable. You'll see it being subjected to steel training weapons, sharpened steel weapons, as well as a good volley of arrows. So sit back and enjoy the carnage. Thanks for watching. This is the Center grip shield that you can buy commercially. It's the lightest I could find. It is nine, just over nine pounds. Uh huh, uh huh. About 30 inches, 29 inches. This is one that you reconstituted, yes? Yep. yep. So this was an FCA shield? Modified plywood, yep. Okay, so this is a traditionally made plank shield. You can see the lines across the back here. It's got a natural linen backing that I uh, hide glue reinforced. It's got a front uh, goat hide facing that I um, applied with hide glue that put layers of glue on top of it. And the rim here is uh, four, five, six layers of horse hide, two layers of goat hide, and two layers of linen reinforced by glue uh, wide across this way. Um, what else do we want to do? Uh, what's the wood? Uh, 30 inches, I believe. Yeah, and it's made of balsa wood. Balsa wood, yeah. I used balsa wood on purpose because it's the weakest wood that I could think of because I wanted to test the plywood ones uh, and use them more quickly and agilely than we could. All of the plywood shells I got this big weigh 9 to 11 pounds. This one weighs 4.8. 4.8 pounds. Less than I thought, actually. For this big a shield. We're going to start off with dull rebated swords. They're going to be swinging at me. I'm not going to have a weapon. I'm strictly defensive with my shield. And I'm going to be using the shield as I'm going to in the fight. After the dull swords, we're going to try this out with some sharp swords. That's why I'm wearing the mail. Not to look cool, although it helps. But we're going to be swinging sharp swords at me, so I want to have the protection against cuts. And one of the things that's been really important to me is that we have somebody testing it by actually holding it, because I've seen shield tests where they take the shield, they put it on the ground, and they start acting like the skeletons like the guy at the floor. So we're going to be like that, where they tie it to something so it's fixed. None of that is really reflective of the adaptability of the that's why we're doing this. We want to we want to see how these shields react if a blow is coming out. If I step to the side, to not we want to see how it reacts in a real fight.
Let's take three more. Okay? So here we go right here, and then the glue is kind of popping off, so I'm going to have to add some sort of uh, some sort of stabilizer to the glue so that it doesn't just crack and fall apart. And But that, look at that, that is almost nothing, really. That's, that's not even hardly a dent right there. So my edge is good. But this is pretty much not. So what was the experience? While I was defending with the shield, <coughs> I love the weight. It just moves. And there were several times when John was swinging at me that I could feel myself defending. And I still had plenty of time to throw a counterattack if I had a sword and was attacking. Uh, it's so fast and so mobile that I can put it anywhere I want without using my shoulder and throwing it out of position for the next action. Uh -huh. I think the only defense I missed was one of the final thrusts. I think that's the only thing I missed on this. When I was taking the impact on the shield, on the, on the rim, it was pushing down, mm -hmm. but I didn't feel any flex or any break or anything like that. I did see out of the corner of my eye Little chips flying off, but that yeah. was the glue. That's the glue. How'd sure. that feel to you? Um, so to me, as an offending attacker point of this here, that thing's just magic. Um, I throw a cut somewhere there to go for to make him go after it so I can transfer to another point and he'd just flick it on up. So watching how quick the shield could travel was amazing. Um, another piece to me is when I was swinging at him and getting sensation impacts and transferring it back to me, I could actually feel the shield flex a little bit under the impacts and then kind of push back a little bit, which mm. is really interesting. I think that's what broke down. And I think that's actually what fractured through here as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so I was seeing little bits and pieces fly a little bit there, especially when I was going with uh, flat impacts with my stabs at him. Mm -hmm. When he'd catch it here, or if he'd catch me in a wide impact, so I'd actually hit here and roll a little bit, so I'd actually get more impact to the flat. Which but, we don't even see. We saw we see one right there. Yeah. We can see one cut mark right there. One little one. What's that? We can see one little cut mark right there. Oh. See the okay. brown on the on Fenris? Yeah, yeah. All right. And these are thrusts, I think. Yep. Okay. Yeah, this is specifically, I know this is one of my thrusts right here. Fantastic. It didn't go through. No, not at all. For sure that that would be good. So now we're going to be moving to a sharp sword with thrust and cut. Again, that's why the halberd. This is the sword we're going to be using. It's an Angus trim uh, early period sword, 1300s. I can never remember the oak shot typology. So, <laughs> hey, you guys, give me typology. <laughs> but this is the edge that we're using against this shield with that is. Hide, hide glue, balsa wood. And paper. Uh -huh. So that's what he's swinging at me. Don't miss. <laughs> and again, go for you.
cut there into the rim. Yes. Big cut there. Big cut there. That's by far the biggest cut. That's the one where it got lodged in, yep. right? There's another thrust. Yeah, I could feel I the point. See. I could feel the point. Put your point in that hole. What you will never get on shield tests when they post it, uh, when they stick it to a post, go ahead and pull it out, please. Every time he did a thrust, I don't want to be in front of that point, so give me a slow thrust. So I would reset it off to the side. That would catch his point, and look at all the targets I have available to me at that point. When he thrust with a, 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 from your left side, and that rotation there, giving me that strike. A thrust against this shield, look at the back. And yeah, there's, there's another, another one. hole right, right through there. And that's from a thrust as that's well? A thrust. That's a thrust. There's another one. But it stopped it. Yeah. Actually, uh, John, if you wouldn't mind, uh, can we find that thrust hole again, stick it in, and just see how deep that actually went? Through the other yeah. side, you mean? So let's go ahead and do this one right here. Yep. Make sure everyone hands are pretty clear yeah, in the back clear. there. There now, we go. Yep. Now let's yep. get it over to... Look at that. There we go. All the way through. But um, because I moved it to the side, I trapped his sword. Yeah, I saw that that last trap was great. That's like classic. Well, there were several of those traps that there were several. Traps. I just didn't swing at him. Oh, I see. Yeah, just take your no, stick it back in. Yeah, put your finger against it. Let's see how deep it is. Okay. And so that's the depth that I went on through. Inch deep. Yes. Um, while on a moving target. So if this was stationary, you could see that that thrust could, you know, do that over sure, penetration sure. line and everything. But um, this is on a moving target. And the, the amazing thing about, again, being an attacker here, and actually what's, what's fantastic about this, this shield here is it actually gives us a lot of information on the sword in return. So we can see how deep that thrust went. But let's look at these nice kind of stains of the glue and the hide and everything that went on the sword. Now let's look at this top portion here where we want to throw those optimal cuts. Now this is what I'm using to aim at my opponent. So yeah. this, this great little spot from about here to here for me. Uh -huh. okay. And we yeah. can see that there's very little. So this is where we saw a lot of the impact into the shield. Right. Um, and a lot of that too, I think, was because I was moving. You were moving it. too. So it was never, it was either in close or it's changed up. Every time I hit up here to the shield, aside from the thrusts, I felt very little uh, catch. I would actually skip. I felt a few skips off the shield with mm. a sharp. Each time I came in in a deeper line, that's where I cut into the shield. Uh -huh. I'll let you know, as an, again, and we're going to talk as an offending opponent here. Let's go back to the thrust here. With that little bit, this little bit in the, of the catch of the sword. I went in this much, and I could feel the entire sword flex in my grip every single time he moved. Uh -huh. I lost complete control of my sword mm. right inside of this zone here. Every time I felt this, I moved this way. And look what that does to the sword and to him. Yep. Wide open to every single stroke point there. And we can see, if, it, if we can everyone, you can see when he moves in on out, there is this bow in my sword. I, I can't control anything inside of this right here. So my only action is to try, and even in here, we could see that resistance, that point where it doesn't want to come free of the shield. And then we listen to the sagas, take a thrust to the shield, take them off at the knee. I can see that happening, absolutely. Uh -huh. Now, coming into the rim, the rim of the shield, this was, this was amazing for me as an attacker here. Every time I'd come in with a downward stroke or any form or even a sideways here, I would hit into this zone. And I would feel this immediate bite. And here's actually a wonderful piece here. We can see about three different bite zones inside of the shield. We can see right here, right next to that edge there, there's this really light bite. That's that top tip right there. That did next to nothing to cut through. But now we see right beside it, that's me getting closer to the middle of that blade. And that just hacks into that position. Every time I cut into his shield, I had no control of my sword. Look at this one right here. Huh. Yeah. Now let's look at this one right here. Now this one, this one went really nice and deep because that it went from here. One, right? This was the second to last, oh, okay. here to here. 
And this one just hacked in there. The moment I bit inside of here, if he had another weapon, I was gone for. I was done immediately. Now we can see what just happened here. Look how far into that my sword just went. If I've got a shield, I'm hoping to gosh, but. Yeah, I'm taking that. You're hand taking that right arm. There. And the moment my shield bites in here, how fast am I going to be able to get mine back in play here? I don't know. And Spend every time, look at this, rolling the shield. I'm trying to get this back. He's going to roll it, twist it. I have no chance of getting this back in play. It's, it's just terrifying. So, this was, this was really, really fascinating. What I like about this is, we hacked the rim. It did not break off. There nope. are four impacts here. One, two, three, four. Oh, look at that. We I haven't that even one. noticed. This is now barely, <laughs> let's get a close up to this. This hasn't even cut all the way off this one piece. So I'd like to give, I'd like and that, that when we're done. That is balsa wood, by yeah. the way. You can this, scratch it with your fingernail. Yeah, and look at that. Look at that. This is a sword against one of the, the weakest, lightest woods out there. That's I'd like beautiful. to take one more swing. Give me a berserker swing, and I'm going to step out of the way and hit the shield. Ready? 